Hello everyone and welcome to the latest iteration of the course Open Network Learning, a different sort of course that we hope will change the way you think about teaching and learning. We'll be, uh, we're part of the course organizer team basically and we put the thing together with the help of lots of colleagues who you'll be meeting over the next few weeks from universities all over the world. But first of all, our own introductions to give you an idea of who's behind all this. My name's Alistair Creelman. I work at Linnaeus University in Kalmar in the southeast of Sweden, and I work as an e-learning specialist there. Uh, and I am Maria Kvarnström. I work as a senior lecturer at Linköping University. And I'm Lars Ulin. I work as an educational developer at Linköping University. And I'm Lotta Objansson. I'm an educational developer at Lund University. And my name is Jörg Paregis. I'm the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Karlstad University in the middle of Sweden. So, we wish you a very warm welcome. We look forward to learning with you over the next few weeks. And uh, let's have a look at the course now. I'm going to give you a quick run through the structure, a general overview of what to expect in the next few weeks. And uh, just some information about the participating uh, universities, how we participate and how we collaborate on the course. So open network learning has been running since 2014. Uh, we've generally had two iterations per year and the course has evolved all the time. After each iteration, we in the, we in the course uh, team, we tend, we look at what's gone on, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Sometimes we make major changes for the next time and other times we make smaller changes. You may wonder why it's called ONL202. That's because it's the second course of 2020. So uh, the first course next year will be 211. However, we start 14th of September. We go through to the 6th of December. It's pretty intensive. There's going to be a lot of uh, new things that you'll discover, but you'll be doing it together with colleagues from all over the world. And I think that's really the uh, unique appeal and uh, profile of open network learning is the international community that we build. It's about collaboration with colleagues from different disciplines, from different universities, from different cultures. It's about building up that community, your personal learning network, by solving problems together, by discussing and creating um, creating solutions. It's also about something called virtual mobility. Today, of course, uh, we are not able to travel very much at the moment due to the COVID-19 crisis. But even after that, uh, I think traveling is going to become much more limited. And in higher education, we must cut down on our physical mobility. That means that uh, for international collaboration, we will need to do it digitally. And this is a course that equips you for that. We are not doing a technical course. This is not a course for learning how to use the tools. You will learn how to use tools, but the course is not particularly about that. It's about using tools, using different methods in your teaching and learning. So it's not a focus really on the technical side. It is a focus on the pedagogical side. Having said that, let's move forward and show you how it works. In the center, we have all of you and all of us, the ONL202 community. In most courses, we're normally over 100 people, and uh, that's quite a large amount of, uh, of participants and uh, facilitators. These people come from a number of institutions. And you can see that for this iteration, we have uh, quite a few Swedish, seven Swedish institutions, two from Finland, one Switzerland, one Germany, one Singapore, and two from South Africa. Each of these institutions provides one or two groups of participants. So maybe six or to 12 participants from each of these universities. We also go out publicly and we invite open learners to take part. Now we don't have many spaces for open learners. It normally is around 30 that we admit 
and uh, we do a little bit of careful advertising amongst contacts around the world. But basically the open learners can come from just about anywhere and they provide very different insights from universities in countries that we normally may not have many contacts with and we have a long list of countries where the open learners have come from and they they, they, they have a very important role in this course. So all the participants come from many different institutions and what we do the center part of the course is the, um, the study groups so-called PBL groups problem-based learning groups. There are normally eight participants in each group and they come uh, from a mix so you're very unlikely to be in a group together with somebody from your own institution so you get a rainbow group so we have all these groups and they will work together week after week solving problems collaborating working together so that the core of the course is in your groups and it's very important that you attend your group meetings keep in touch with your group at all times and uh, and work together because without that the course really doesn't work very well each group to help them has a facilitator who comes from one of the institutions and has been on the course before, knows all about it and uh, is, is, is ready to provide that facilitation in the group. Helping them, they have co-facilitators and the co-facilitators are former participants who have enjoyed it so much they want to come back again. And they are like uh, study buddies or mentors and they know what it feels like to be a participant. So for each group, you've got a facilitator who has a more responsible role for the group and a co-facilitator who is in a way one of you and can give you some wise advice and uh, keep things calm when things get a little bit, um, a little bit uh, hectic. Okay. Here is the way the course is mapped out. We have a week of getting started and we saw that that was necessary a, a little while back when people, it was, people needed time to get tuned in. So that's really just getting, getting on board with the course platform, getting signed up for everything, making sure everybody's the, it, in place. Then you get put into your groups and the connecting week is all about getting to know your group and uh, getting started getting to uh, getting to know each other. The group, the, the real course activity starts in week three, where we have topic one, online participation and digital literacies, two weeks of that. We go on to topic two on open learning. We then have a reflection week. That's not a week off, but it's a week to catch up, to discuss where, how much have we, what have we done so far? What's missing? How, do, how can we pr improve for the rest of the course? And then topics three, four, and five, right through to the end in December. This is how uh, the whole course, this is the sort of overview of the course. Now, there are three levels of interaction on the course. At the highest level, we have the whole community space. This is an area on the website where you can go in and communicate with the whole community, everyone who is taking part in the course. And that's a sort of forum for everyone. You'll then, after the second week, begin working in your PBL groups and they will have their individual, they'll have their group spaces, which are private. And that's where you do a lot of your work. So you have the whole community, your PBL group. <clears throat> and the bottom level is your individual level, because you'll also be writing blog posts for every topic where you'll be reflecting on your own learning. And this is important that we look at these three levels, the big community, the sort of very public space, the group space and the individual space. You see the topics at the top level on the top level at the bottom. You can see that during all the weeks, we will provide you with webinars, maybe a tweet chat, various activities that are common for it that are available for everybody to give you extra input. They're not compulsory but we would advise you to participate if you can, but we always record them. Finally, if we look at a two week topic, the topic will be introduced on the website. 
generally a couple of days before the topic begins. Then you will get to know what the scenario is that you're going to work with because it's problem based learning. So you'll get a scenario that you have to solve. You would probably then have a group meeting to discuss this. Then you might have the webinar up here giving you more input. You'll be discussing in your groups during this time. Then you'll have another group meeting, another one and another one. And by the end of this, you will share a presentation solving the scenario. You will present the scenario and your solution to the whole community. You will also be able to make your individual reflections in your blog and get comments on that blog post. You'll also get comments on the presentation that you make for the whole community. And all through this two week period, you'll be working in the community space for the whole course, your group space and your individual studies. So that is really an overview of how it's going to work. It makes much more sense once we've started, but have a look around the website, have a look at all the different category, the different tabs, get yourself ready to go and uh, the best of luck. We'll see you very soon.